All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to more 428 Shibuya Scramble. My name is Raven from the Sky, and let's do this. Ah, the rice has finished thawing. Kajiwara topped the steaming bowl of rice with a fried egg he'd whipped up in his pan. Then, as if it were an afterthought, he added some pickled vegetables. Kimchi. <laughs> That's probably that's like kimchi. Here you are, sir. Your fried egg on rice is complete. One of Kajiwara's simple recipes. Others include his white spaghetti, which is simply spaghetti that's been flavored with butter, salt, and pepper after it's been boiled. Both are a bit too basic to be properly called cuisine, but it does take a certain skill to bring the best flavor out of the ingredients with such simple seasonings. Here you are, sir. Oh, all right. Kajuara grinned from ear to ear. Go ahead and eat it while it's still warm. Osara received the bowl with a dubious look. You aren't very good at cooking, are you? He said. All you had in your refrigerator were eggs and pickled vegetables, sir. I assure you it's quite delicious. I recommend breaking the yolk and mixing it all together. Reluctantly, Osawa brought a bite to his mouth. Mmm, that's good. The words came out almost unbidden. Isn't it just? Egg yolk and pickled vegetables pair quite well. Osawa couldn't help but stuff his face, slipping into a rapturous daze as he did. The more he ate, the more it stirred its appetite. I had no idea fried eggs could be this delicious. I know you probably have a long ordeal still ahead of you, sir. But please, keep your chin up and hang in there. Kajuara gave Osara an amiable smile. <laughs> ah, that's right, he continued. And for dessert, we have bananas. Oh no, thank you. Kajuara grinned, grimaced as Osawa held up a hand in refusal. Right then, when you're finished eating, would you please wash the bowl? Me? Wash dishes? Osawa exclaimed, exclaimed in surprise, sounding like he, a petulant child. If someone else cooks for, excuse me, if someone else cooks for you, you should do the cleaning up. It's only polite. Fine, okay. While Osawa was doing the dishes, the bug detector went off again. Oh boy. Director, if you have a moment. Tanaka poked his head into the kitchen. I've got something urgent to discuss with you. That's it? That was quick. We've already reached Keep Out. Now let me go to the time chart. Long at last, he arrived at the Nocane building, where the event was being held. The wall by the elevator was plastered with posters about Burning Hammer. Get it or regret it. A scene in magazines. 100% weight loss guaranteed. Messaging was kind of a mess. Felt like they'd been thrown together at the last minute. Norikawa avoided the elevator in favor of the stairs, rushing up to the event site on the third floor. Merging from the stairwell, he saw more posters on the wall pointing the way to the sales demo. He followed the arrows to a room deep within the building. Opening the door, he saw about 50 chairs. Both of them occupied by female attendees. There was a stage set up at the far end of the room, but nobody was on it. It appeared that the event had yet to begin. Norikawa quickly looked over the crowd. We've already seen this, but see, it's going to be different because 
I got the, the, the stuff back with with um Tammy. Cat. Elderly, all of them look like they can stand and lose some weight. And for some of them at least, that ship had surely sailed some time ago. The crowd gazed at the stage with rapt anticipation. A beverage that allowed you to eat plenty and still lose weight was definitely an appetizing proposition. Did something like that really exist though? Oh well. Minori Kyle was just going to have to wait and see. He did his best to get his mind in journalism mode. Time passed, the demo didn't start, the audience began grumbling in frustration. And a heavy set young woman took the stage and gave a little bow. It was the girl from the cafe, the one with the amazing appetite. The audience broke into applause as their patient finally was rewarded. But as everyone leaned forward expectantly, the girl in the Oh shoot, this is gonna be This might be another bad ending. She started performing magic tricks. She twindled a silk hat and pulled a bunch of flowers from inside it. Sparse applauses rose up from the crowd. The young woman immediately went on to perform another trick and then another. Ta-da! A coin in her hand became three coins as she spoke her magic words. She's not very good at this. Though whether she was good or bad wasn't really the issue. He had a tight schedule to keep. This was no time to stand around watching silly sleight of hand antics. Scanning the room, he spotted a man who looked like he was probably in charge. The guard headed over to him. Hey, you, the one running this thing? Uh, well, yes. When's the actual sales demo gonna start? Soon, very soon, yep. In how many minutes? You know, soon. Ask for a number. <laughs> Just, uh, soon, real soon. This was getting him nowhere. Three minutes, Bidor Kara declared. Held up three fingers to emphasize his point. If this thing doesn't start three minutes, if it doesn't start then, then what? I'm going to be heartbroken. <laughs> I'm going to start a ruckus. I'm going to go home. So it's either heartbroken or ruckus. It's not this. It's definitely not C. It's one of these two. I'm going to be heartbroken. Kept his expression blank as, blank as an empty slate. Hey, now. No need for that, sir. Just settle down. Who doesn't like a silly little magic show now and then? You've got two minutes. Hey, a minute can't have passed already. One minute. Whoa, just what kind of watch you got there? Tell me why the demo isn't starting. Oh, well, uh, you know, uh, no real reason, really. The man was getting seriously flustered. I just, you know, I want folks to get to see a little magic show first. Nope, try again. 30 seconds left. Okay, okay, okay. All right. What happened is uh, the required merchandise. Uh, what happened to the merchandise? Minokara demanded. Gave the guy a dagger stare. Uh, well, you know, it's just, ha 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 ha. Time's up. What? The man's face went pale. Keep out. Following Kano's directions, Stanley drove toward the crime syndicate's hangout. There was a good chance that this was where Maria was being held. Traffic was practically non-existent and they made good time. They cruised down Maya Masua. Maya Masuzaka, then passed the train station toward Dogenzaka. 
All the while, the two men stared out the windshield, neither inclined to make conversation. They arrived at the Shinsenchu in this intersection. Take it right here, Kano said. Are you nervous? His own tone was calm and level. Kano gave no reply. If this syndicate really was holding Maria hostage up ahead, he and Stanley might wind up putting it, her in danger by showing up there. That's true. If it came down to it, Kano wondered, could he count on the man next to him taking the hostage safety into account? He doubted it, but there was nothing he could do about that now. They arrived at the syndicate's hangout sooner than Kano had anticipated. It was a multi-tenant building in Tomigawa, southwest of the Yoyogi Park. The ratty building looked like it might come crashing down any moment. The Black Lodge sign out front looked deliberately ominous. Kano knew the place as a bar frequented by expats from various countries, as well as a hotbed of criminal activity. I'll take point. He backed me up. He pulled the handgun from his suit pocket. It was a compact Glock, a model frequently used by the FBI or CIA. Glock. Glock 17, a semi-automatic pistol developed in Austria for police and military use. Notable for its incorporation of large amounts of polymer plastic in its design, a certain Hollywood film included a line of dialogue claiming that the Glock would not show up on airport x-ray machines. But since the gun barrel itself is made of metal, it is assuredly not true. American Investigation Bureau established by the U.S. Department of Justice in 1908. It was authority in matters involving crimes that cross state lines, as well as threats to public order, such as espionage and terrorism. Generally speaking, the FBI conducts its activities within the United States. Central Intelligence Agency, one of the principal agencies of the U.S. intelligence com commu community, reporting to the Director of National Intelligence, possessing considerable budgetary resources and a vast network of highly trained personnel. The CIA carries out intelligence gathering and covert operations primarily overseas. In recent years, the organization has been devoting major efforts to counterterrorism. Okay, now drew his own gun and the two cautiously made their way inside. They immediately heard some sort of ruckus from beyond the wooden door far in the hall. Please don't let this be what I think it is, Kano thought to himself. Sweat beat on his hands as he gripped his gun tighter. He heard the sound of glass shattering. Then came the sound of something heavy falling to the floor. Maria! Ignoring Stanley's previous order, Kano rushed ahead, kicked down the door, and stepped inside. right to a massacre. There were nearly a dozen bodies sprawled out across the floor. He thought he recognized them all, the men who participated in the repeated attaché case handoffs. Each appeared to have been stabbed to death. Had these guys all turned on each other? No, that couldn't have been the case. None of the victims was holding the knife which meant that whoever had killed them must still be hiding nearby. No sooner had Kano come to his conclusion than he heard a muffled cry behind him. Stanley! The American was sprawled on the floor face down. Kano rushed over and knelt beside him. Stanley was dead, stabbed through the back. hesitation, Kano stood up again, gun at the ready. He scanned his surroundings, but there was no sign of the killer. But that was impossible. Stanley had been killed mere moments ago. 
someone had to be there here somewhere. Out of nowhere, he felt someone press the tip of a knife into his neck from behind, right at the base of his skull. How? He hadn't noticed anyone coming up on him. There wasn't even anyone else around. Nobody but the corpses scattered across the floor. Wait, the corpses? Kano hadn't checked them. Hadn't checked to make sure they were all really dead. His last thought, he realized that, had been his fatal mistake. Oh! Bad ending. I thought they were dead. Alas, there's nothing to be done for poor Kano now. He wasn't prepared for whoever is wielding that knife. Sometimes it's best not to rush things. Kano and Stanley might not have had their run-in killer if they turned up a bit later. There's someone who can cause a traffic jam at 1310. It should keep these two from meeting such a grisly end. Okay. Suddenly, the assassin's head jerked forward. He pitched face first into the pavement and lay still, revealing a foreign man standing behind him. In one hand, the stranger clutched a metal pipe. Hitomi, Aichi asked, you know the guy, that guy? Hitomi's eyes went wide. That's the man from the scramble. The one who told me to go to the van. Wait. One of the kidnappers? Why would he help us? I'm not sure. The newcomer fixed his eyes on Aichi. Hey man, Aichi approached the stranger. I'm not sure what's going on here, but thanks for the assist. Whoa! The man took a sudden swing with his pipe. Aichi barely managed to dodge out of the way. What the heck? Once again, Aichi made sure Hitomi was safely behind him. Guess I gotta let my fist do the talking. Aichi quickly adopted a fighting stance. Be careful, Hitomi warned, her voice trembling. Don't worry, it's just a pipe. I'll just snatch it away from him and make him tell us where your sister is. I should judge the distance between them carefully as he started his upstairs opponent down. The, myth, the metal pipe gave this stuff considerable reach. One solid hit from that thing and Aichi wouldn't stand a chance. He needed to end this in one punch. Huh? The crook. Crook sized him up for a few moments, then lunged forward to attack. Now! As he sidestepped to avoid the oncoming blow, then delivered a vicious left hook to his adversary's jaw. The man went down hard. As he gazes his fallen foe, flexing his knuckles. The thing about guys who bring weapons to fights is they always let themselves get too cocky. He looked at the guy, he looked the guy over. The man had a tattoo peeking from one of his ratty sleeves. Come on, buddy. You can't clock out just yet. Get up, I've got a few questions for you. He knelt down to grab the man by his collar. Oh, oh, sh oh God. Halfway to his feet, the man pulled a gun from his breast pocket. Whoa, didn't know you were packing heat. I actually took a quick step backward. 
The man's eyes brimmed with rage. He looked ready to pull the trigger at any moment. But he didn't get the chance. The man with the cane had regained consciousness. Back on his feet, he trained his own gun on the foreigner. The foreigner quickly shifted his attention to the other gunman. Oh no, you don't! Aichi darted forward and kicked the kidnapper in the hand hard as he could. The gun went flying from his grasp. With a low snarl, the man took up the metal pipe again. Rather than go for Aichi, he charged the man with cane. What the? Aichi watched in astonishment as the two men grappled. Now's our chance! Grabbing Hitomi by the hand, Aichi broke into a run. They ran for a long time, finally stopping to rest in a quiet municipal, municipal park. As they sat, catching their breath, Aichi tensed, sensed a new tension in on, I mean, a new tension in Hitomi. She hadn't said a word since their latest escape. She has to die, Aichi. It's for your own good. In his mind, Aichi replayed what the man with the cane had said. So, it told me. Aichi hesitated. About what happened back there? Yeah? She sounded like she'd been far gone in her own thoughts. You gotta believe me. I have no idea who that guy was. Never seen him before in my life. He must have been saying that stuff to confuse us, to trip us up. Yeah, they told me said again. Is that what's been bothering you? Now it's it was Aichi's turn to go. What is it? Monosy monosyllabic? monosyllabic. Well, Aichi, you're kind of famous around Shibuya, right? Oh, I don't know about that. Way back when, he'd been the leader of SOS. Nowadays, he was just some guy who picked up trash. There was nothing to brag about. When someone's famous, it's not unusual for someone else to recognize them and know their name. So yeah, I was surprised back there. But no matter what that man may have said, I trust you. I mean, look at how many times you've put yourself in danger to protect me. Tommy sounded pretty resolute. Aichi was glad that she believed him. But that raised another question. So then how come you've been so quiet? I've just been thinking about things. Like what that man, like what that man from the scramble might be after. It was true that his actions didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, he seemed more interested in taking out the man with the cane than going after you. Maybe there's bad blood between them. Maybe it was a case of mistaken identity. There was no mistaken identity. Maybe there's bad blood between them. I should let out a little chuckle. If you're lucky, maybe they'll take each <laughs> they'll take each other out for us. I felt the rush of relief reassured that his tummy didn't doubt his motives. Regardless, though, we have to track down that blue van. Sound of a child's cry came from behind him. Oh! Turned to look, they saw a kidnapper rushing towards them. He had knocked over a little girl who was in his way. Now, no rest for the weary, as she sighed. Yet again, he and Hitomi sprinted away. Do you think he took out the guy with the cane? Tommy's words came between panting huffs. Maybe. I just glanced back at, at their pursuer. What? There was someone else with him. Now they were being chased down by two foreigners. I like this better than when we were just running from one guy with a cane. One-on-one -on -one fight, Aichi was confident he could keep Hitomi safe. One-on-two, -on -two, though, that was a different story. One guy might get a hold of her while he was facing off against the other. He had to make sure they 
they lost these creeps no matter what. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. My name is Raven from the Sky. If you enjoyed the episode, drop a like and subscribe to the channel and series grow. Take care, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out.